In the last few weeks, there has been a lot of news about a new celiac disease miracle drug. But what you may not know is there's not just one drug in developmental phases at the moment, there are 13. So, are any of them on the path to curing celiac disease? Let's find out. If this is your first time watching this channel, I'm Morgan and I make videos about anything to do with celiac disease and being gluten free So make sure you hit that subscribe button for more videos Firstly, I just want to say that I'm not a scientist. I have a bachelor's degree in musical theatre But what I have done is dived headfirst into a bunch of research papers and news articles about these celiac disease drugs in developmental phases at the moment For the sole purposes of condensing that information down and presenting it in a more accessible way without all the medical jargon. However, if you would like to read the articles yourself, I have left all the links to where I found my information in the description box below. And that's on sighting. <laughs> As I mentioned at the start, according to celiac.org, there are 13 different drugs in development phases at the moment. We're not going to talk about all 13 today. I'm going to be talking about five different drugs that are all taking various approaches to preventing an immune response in celiacs when they ingest gluten, all of which are up to at least phase two in their trials. And then at the end of this video, I asked you guys what you'd want to know about a potential celiac disease drug, and I will answer all of those questions at the end. Just before we start off, I want to talk about the different phases of clinical trials as I will be talking about them a lot in this video. So there are four different phases of clinical trials. Phase one usually consists of about 50 to 100 healthy volunteers without the condition, which helps determine the drug's safety, side effects, and how long it should be taken. Phase two is usually 100 to 300 volunteers with the condition that the drug is used for. Researchers will assess the short-term safety and effectiveness of the drug, as well as find the dose that works best with the least side effects and conduct a small scale placebo comparison. Phase three is very similar, but with a much larger pool of participants usually from hundreds to thousands. Researchers will confirm the drug's safety, effectiveness, and compare it to placebos and other therapies. After that, the drug can be put forward for FDA approval, and once it's been approved, it moves on to phase four. Researchers will study the safety and effectiveness in a very large pool of patients and enable development for the drug in other uses. Phase four usually involves thousands of people. We're gonna start off with the drug that's been in the news most recently. If you're in a celiac community, you might have seen at least one person share an article with celiac disease cure in the title, especially if you're on Facebook. This drug is ZED1227. Just flows off the tongue, doesn't it? The reason you may have heard about this one is that a paper was published on the 1st of July showing promising results from the initial trials. All the drugs I'm going to talk about today have different ways of preventing an immune response. So for ZED1227, this works by preventing the enzyme TTG or transglutaminase from modifying gluten in the cell, which is part of the process that leads to the immune reaction. Basically, in this trial, celiacs were given 10 milligrams of the drug, another group of celiacs were given 50 milligrams of the drug, another group of celiacs were given 100 milligrams of the drug, and of course, there were a group of celiacs that unfortunately got the placebo. Over the course of six weeks, the participants were given a pill daily. They were also given a biscuit with moderate amounts of gluten to eat 30 minutes after taking the pill. And the results were promising. Those on the drugs showed fewer signs of intestinal damage. However, there were some side effects reported such as nausea, headaches, abdominal pain, diarrhea, and a rash that showed up in 8% of the patients that were on the highest dose of ZED1227. Obviously, further trials will need to be done in a much larger pool of celiacs for it to even be considered for FDA approval. Many have already stated that this pill would not be an alternative treatment to a gluten-free diet, but rather an additional treatment that can help with a gluten-free lifestyle. If you ask me on what that might look like, obviously the drug's got a long way to go in terms of trials, but perhaps you could be out for dinner in a place that you didn't know was 100% gluten-free and you had a pill before you ate your dinner to prevent cross-contamination, which would be extremely useful and I totally would consider it if it didn't come with, you know, side effects. Now we're moving on to the next drug, TAK101. You may have heard about this one as it was also in the news recently and was described as the Trojan horse drug. This is because the drug contains a very, very small amount of gluten protein. TAK101 works to reprogram the immune system by training it not to react when it comes into contact with gluten protein. I believe a similar thing was done with peanuts and people with peanut allergies a few years back, but don't quote me on that. In phase one of this trial, the drug was administered on day one and day eight, 
by intravenous administration. Because it was the first phase of this trial and pretty much just to determine the drug's safety, there were no gluten tests involved in this one. The most frequently reported side effects for this one was flushing, back pains, headache and fatigue. In phase 2a of this trial, which happened in 2019, and with celiac participants, the drug was administered again on day 1 and day 8, and then the participants were asked to complete a 14-day gluten challenge. The gluten they consumed was just a very minimal amount of gluten. It's not like they were going back eating gluten full-time. It was like, I think it was between 3 and 12 grams of gluten, which actually was given to them in a powder form. And this time the results were promising once again. The results noted that TAK101 was well tolerated and it prevented a gluten-induced immune response in celiac disease patients. The findings from TAK101 also suggested that this drug might be transmissible for other autoimmune-related diseases, which is extremely interesting. Phase 2b of this trial is looking to be started this month, August 2021, with the results scheduled to be published in March 2023. So we'll be waiting a little while longer to hear the results from that. I just wanted to mention that we don't yet know how long this treatment will last, if there are any long-term side effects, and how it would be given as a treatment. In fact, we don't even really know if this is supposed to be supplementary to a gluten-free diet or in complete replacements. Hopefully we'll find out all about that soon. Next up, we have PRV015 which is actually partnered up with the Celiac Disease Foundation in the US. The way PRV015 works is a little bit difficult, so I am going to have to read it because there was no way I could commit this to memory. Stick with me here. PRV015 is designed to block interleukin-15, a cytokine that plays a central role in celiac disease, creating inflammation and intestinal damage. Most sources I've found have said that PRV015 aims to reduce symptoms and intestinal inflammation after a gluten exposure in combination with a gluten-free diet. So, once again, not a cure. I couldn't really find out how exactly these worked in the trials. All I found out was that this drug was given every two weeks over a six-month period. Actually, when I went on the proactive websites to try to learn about this drug, I saw that they were recruiting for their next phases of the clinical trials. Something interesting I found though is that the next phase of their clinical trials doesn't include a gluten challenge. They are actually looking for celiacs that have been on a gluten-free diet for over 12 months but are still getting celiac disease symptoms. If that sounds like you or if you want to be a volunteer in any of these trials, I'm pretty sure most of them are looking for volunteers so I'll pop all their links in the description below. I do think most of them are trialing out of the US, some in Europe. But you'll have to check. So far, PRV015 has been tested in over 250 participants in six completed research studies. The studies have shown that it's been well tolerated and in celiac patients it may reduce the inflammation of intestines and improve the symptoms for those that continue to experience celiac disease symptoms despite being on a gluten-free diet, which is exciting. The estimated completion date of phase 2b of these trials will be July 2022. Next up we have IMGX003 or Latty Glutenase. Finally one with a catchy name. Right, so this one is a drug that's made up of two enzymes that are designed to target gluten in the stomach, break it down and effectively render it useless and therefore not create an immune response once it's ingested. The website says when taken with meals it offers celiacs as a supplement to a gluten-free diet a little bit more protection against an accidental cross-contamination or gluten consumption. Once again, not a cure. This drug's actually mixed with water and taken orally. They just finished phase 2b of these trials which included a gluten challenge and it did have some promising results. Subjects experience 60 to 80 percent less intestinal damage and 53 to 90 percent less symptoms when compared with a placebo. And at Stanford University this drug is also being tested on people with celiac disease and type 1 diabetes as there is a genetic link between the both. On the website Solutions for Celiacs, one of their next trials involves six in-office visits over 26 weeks with no biopsies and no injections. Less than five times a month, participants are asked to eat a study-provided snack that is either gluten-free or gluten-containing. It will be the equivalent of about half a slice of bread along with the drug. This is designed to mimic accidental gluten exposure. Uh exposure. Our last drug today is actually the furthest along in terms of trials and that drug is lorazotide acetate. I think that's how you say it. They're currently in phase three of their trials looking to get FDA approval once completed. In terms of how this one works, 
it's incredibly difficult to explain. I haven't quite wrapped my head around it either, so I am going to read off my iPad again. There is actually a useful animation on the 9 meters website that I'll link below if you want a visual representation on how the stroke works. But as a verbal explanation, on the pharmaceutical technology site, it's described lorazetide as a short peptide that aims to reduce leakiness from the disrupted tight junctions between cells in the gut that appear when a celiac patients ingest gluten. So apparently we've got these tight junctions that are located in the bowel. They should remain closed at all times. However, in patients with celiac disease, gluten causes the tight junctions to open. And because of that, this spurs the inflammation that causes the intestinal damage that you commonly see in celiacs. Isn't the body just full of wonders? So it says when taken before a meal, lorazetide acetate may help keep the tight junctions closed and therefore reducing the inflammatory process triggered by gluten by keeping it in the digestive tract. Interestingly, they're actually looking at whether lorazetide can help with other toxins that cause inflammation. So there might be other uses for this one. But once again, this drug is designed to work with a gluten-free diet and should be taken 15 minutes before a meal three times a day to prevent any accidental gluten exposure. Phase three of the trials actually started in 2019 and the results are supposed to be published this year. So I expect we will be seeing more of those articles in the news about this one shortly. This one is the drug that could be potentially available to us the soonest perhaps within the next five years if we're lucky. Now we're gonna move on to some frequently asked questions I got on Instagram when I asked you guys what you'd want to know about a potential celiac disease drug. First question, what is the potential timeline slash rollout? As I mentioned before, lorazotide acetate is the one that is furthest along in the trials, so will be available to us soonest, potentially within the next five years. All the other ones are looking to be about 10 years away. Are the drugs just masking the symptoms? No, they are all working in their own separate ways to stop the immune response from occurring. So the aim for a lot of them was for no damage to occur when accidentally being exposed to gluten. How much will they cost? Far too soon to say, unfortunately, and I imagine that it will be incredibly dependent on where you live and what your district health boards decide. Are these actually cures? No, it's mostly just clickbait, unfortunately. None of these are advertising themselves as a replacement for a gluten-free diet, more just to help manage it, help prevent accidental gluten exposure, and for hopefully some people with refractory celiac disease, reduce the symptoms. Will there ever be a cure? I don't know, maybe. I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot of things we still don't even know about celiac disease, so who knows? Can I participate? Yes, yes. As I mentioned, most of these trials are looking for willing participants, some with or without gluten challenges. All you need to do is just head to their websites, see if you qualify, and sign yourself up. Morgan, what are your personal thoughts? Oh, well, thank you for asking. Honestly, as someone that is very lucky to be able to manage their gluten-free diet. I don't have refractory celiac disease. I live in a gluten-free household and in a city that has plenty of 100% gluten-free restaurants. I personally am not stressed that it's still kind of a long way for the drugs to be made. However, that doesn't mean I don't think that they are necessary. I think these drugs will change thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people's lives, especially people with refractory celiac disease. So for that reason, I kind of hope that we see them sooner rather than later. In terms of how the drug is administered, I think for me personally, I'd just like a pill or like a water solution. I think if it was intravenous administration, we don't know how often that would be, need to be administered, but if it was frequently, it could get kind of annoying. If it was just one shot, sign me up. But also I like the idea of pills and water solutions for being able to take with you on holiday. So for an example that I can think of, I wish that I had some sort of gluten-free pill was when I was in Japan, I got gluten twice with soy sauce. And perhaps if I was able to take a pill with that meal and prevent that from happening, I would have been happy as Larry. And for me, it would probably greatly reduce anxiety around food cross-contamination. So yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing where these all go. But you might have a completely different opinion and I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Do you want a drug that can help prevent accidental gluten exposure or are you just still holding out hope that one day there'll be a drug for us that means we can go back to eating gluten croissants? Let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget, if you want to read about them, check the description box below. Hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!